Coming of Age is coming up next. I'm your host, Emily Echeverria. First today, we're talking about colon cancer, screenings and treatment. Next up, we're showcasing an organization that is working to heal the invisible wounds of those who have served in the military through world-class mental health care. Finally, we're discussing the issue of elder abuse, the signs, and what to do if you suspect abuse is occurring, and the upcoming World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. Stay with us. Coming of age starts right now. As we age, staying active in life and involved in the community can become a challenge. But with Council on Aging of West Florida's wide range of home-based services, you remain healthy, independent, and engaged. From Meals on Wheels and respite care, to senior dining sites and the retreat, you'll find the support and connection that you need to age well. Aging looks different for everyone, and we're here to help you meet your needs and thrive while maintaining what makes you, you. We've been in the community since 1972, advocating for elders and supporting those who care for our parents and grandparents. Now, join us as we discuss the age-related issues that matter to you. Colon cancer is a highly treatable and often curable disease. The American Cancer Society estimates that there will be over 100,000 new cases of colon cancer in 2024. The rate of people being diagnosed with this disease has dropped overall since the 1980s, due in part to more people getting screened and changing their lifestyle-related risk factors. Here to talk more about the signs, symptoms, and treatment of colon cancer is Dr. Diana Quiros Martin, an internal medicine physician with Baptist Medical Group Gastroenterology. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Emily, for having me here. So first of all, how common is colon cancer? Unfortunately, it's very common. Uh, right now, we have 150,000 cases, new diagnosis per year. So that is second cause of colon cancer death in America is related to colon cancer. For that reason, in an increment that we saw in the last 10 to 15 years, the American Gastroenterological Association decreased the screening age from 50 to 45. Oh. So how does someone detect colon cancer early? You mentioned the, the screening age. Yeah, so let me tell you, colon cancer can not only be detected early, but can be prevented altogether. And there are two valid options to do that, either by a stool sample or colonoscopy. Either option will depend on the person in particular. For example, if the patient doesn't have any family history of colon cancer or any personal risk factors that will predispose them to have colon cancer, such as inflammatory bowel disease, either or is fine. Okay, so uh, you mentioned the family history of colon cancer as an important decision making in terms of selecting the screening methods. So why is that? Yeah, good question. So patients with family history of colon cancer, especially first degree relative, meaning father, mother, siblings, diagnosed under the age of 60, they have an increased risk. We call them high risk. Those patients can only have a colonoscopy has screening and the start age is 40 instead of 45. But if the relative was diagnosed with colon cancer early, the screening is to start earlier. For, for example, let's say a patient has a sister that was diagnosed at 45. That patient in particular needs to have a colonoscopy at 35. And regardless of the results, even if it's normal, it needs to be repeated every five years. Okay, so for those patients that are an average risk and elect to have a stool sample as screening for colon cancer, what happens if it comes back abnormal? Yeah, so if it comes back abnormal, um, in that case, we have to determine if the reason is because they have polyps or cancer, and the next step is a colonoscopy, diagnostic colonoscopy. What is a polyp? Okay, so a polyp is a precancer uh, growth in the colon, and my patients are always surprised to learn that a polyp is a precancer uh, group of cells. And some patients, they have an increased risk. Um, for example, women tend to have 20% of females, they tend to have polyps in the colon, 30% of males they tend to have polyps in the colon. I was telling you early that uh, colon cancer is uh, preventable because once we do a colonoscopy and we see those polyps, we resect the tissue around them, healthy tissue. So we prevent that area from coming back. The reason why we tell patients, you have to come back in five years. If you have polyps, you have to come back in seven years, three years. It's because those polyps, they tend to record in a different area of the colon. That's why we keep a closer eye on them. Okay. So is colon cancer curable once it has reached that cancer stage? Yes. Early stages of colon cancer are treatable and curable. That's why early detection is so important. 
So what about a virtual colonoscopy? Tell me about that. What, what does that mean? Yeah, so first of all, it's not FaceTime because people think virtual, you can do it at home and Zoom or FaceTime is not what it is. Um, the, the virtual colonoscopy is actually done in a CAT scan machine and a technician put a catheter through the rectum and insufflate the colon, and that allows a lining and visualization of the colon. Uh, it's a little bit of comfort, uncomfortable, and what patients don't know is that they still have to drink the prep, mm -hmm. the same prep that the colonoscopy. Um, and then even if it comes back up normal, there's a mass or there are polyps, they need to have a colonoscopy. So tell me a little bit about, you mentioned the stool sample mm -hmm. colonoscopy. So what type of person is right for that type of screening and, and what does that entail? Yeah, so a stool sample um, is very convenient. Uh, you can do it at home and the lab is gonna test for abnormal DNA molecules that they shouldn't be there. Um, but let's say that that test comes back negative, meaning it's completely normal, that person should have a, colon uh, a repeat of stool testing in three years. Uh, the colonoscopy, on the other hand, uh, is more invasive. They have to drink the prep the day before and the day of the procedure, people hate it. But it has the advantage that you can take a look at 100% of the colon. If you see any tiny poly, remove it. So you're preventing uh, colon cancer. And is a colonoscopy, you mentioned a lot of people, they have a, they have a thing about it, they really don't wanna do it. Do people kind of put it off? Do they try to kind of throw it down the line and not get it at that yeah. younger age when they really yeah. need to be starting? Yeah, unfortunately, and we have seen an increment of colon cancer in very young patients, like early 40s, um, early 50s, and it's very sad. And sometimes we think it's like, man, this patient could have been here five years before mm -hmm. this, we are not on this stage. Yeah, it's very important to go on time. Absolutely. Are there other kind of symptoms that would make somebody somebody might start experiencing that would make a, that would warrant a colonoscopy at a younger age other than a family history? Yeah, so early stage of colon cancer, unfortunately, it's usually doesn't have any symptoms, but changing bowel habits, uh, blood in the stools, bloating, abdominal pain, someone that never had abdominal pain before, weight loss, anemia on a regular blood work, those things are red flag that trigger more investigation. Yeah. Got it. And what are, the other, are there other lifestyle factors that people can change and adapt to lower their risk yeah. to prevent it? Yeah, good question. So uh, increase the um, consumption of vegetables and fruits, especially fruits with a high antioxidant uh, levels like blueberries, uh, strawberries, and things like that, and decreasing the red meat at least like only once a week. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are the major two interventions. And is there anything else people need to know about colon cancer risk screenings um, that you would like to share? Um, well, so far the guidelines are evolving. So I predict that maybe in 10 years, things might change a little bit. We might have available genetic testing and blood work and things like that that can guide us and see which patient is high risk and needs to be screened by colonoscopy. He doesn't need to be screened at all. So I think this uh, is evolving. So people should stay tuned in. All right, watch the space. Thank you so much Thank for joining you. us. Thank you, Emily. Next up, we're talking to Homebase about their services to veterans and their families. Stay tuned. It's important to get a flu shot each and every year because flu viruses are constantly changing and immunity from the vaccine decreases over time. Flu vaccines are updated annually to work against that year's viruses. The best time to get your shot is in the fall but getting it later can still help. Getting a flu shot lowers your risk of getting sick. And if you do happen to get flu, it's likely to be less severe. Animal Allies is looking for volunteers and there are many ways that you can help. From taking care of cats to using your computer and social media skills, any and all assistance is greatly appreciated. We have morning and afternoon shifts every day or help at adoption events. You could even foster a kitty at home. And it counts towards community service hours for bright futures. Find Animal Allies Florida on Facebook and Instagram or go to aaflorida.org slash volunteer. When cancer tries to take you away from the things that matter most, Baptist Cancer Institute offers caring physicians and the most innovative treatment options. With convenient locations and a wide array of support programs and services, we're here to help you during the most difficult of times. As a member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network, we're bringing even more innovative cancer care to our community right here at home. When you need cancer care, we'll be there.
Today, we're shining a spotlight on an organization that's making a profound difference in the lives of our nation's service members and their families. Meet Home Base, a national nonprofit dedicated to healing the invisible wounds of war. Founded by Massachusetts General Hospital and the Boston Red Sox, Home Base provides world class direct clinical care, wellness programs, education, and research, all at no cost to those in need regardless of the era of service, dis discharge status, or geographical location. Since 2009, Home Base has served over 35,000 veterans and their family members. And here to tell us more is Armando Hernandez, Senior Director of Home Base Florida, and Betsy Hart, West Florida Program Manager. Thanks for being here, both of you. Thanks for having us. So first of all, tell us a little bit about your role with Home Base and how you got involved with the organization. Yeah, so I started actually as a volunteer for Home Base when we were stationed in Boston. My husband's last tour with the Navy was in Boston. And I started volunteering. I was so impressed about um, all the things they were doing for military veterans, service members, and family members. Um, I quickly applied for a job and, and I've been on board on our family support team for a little over five years. Uh, my husband retired from the Navy. We moved home here back to Pensacola. And now my work is focused on building awareness about our programs and also uh, getting ready to launch some on the ground programs here in Northwest Florida. Awesome. Uh, so I served in the United States Marine Corps shortly after getting on the Marine Corps. Uh, I went back to school um, and in my senior year, I earned an internship with the Boston Red Sox, which is where I met home base. Uh, and they had talked about expanding outside of the New England area and really wanted to figure out how to bring some of their programming to Florida. So for the past 10 years, I focused on helping leading this team here on the ground and growing our programs and our, and our brand and presence in the region. Excellent. So tell me about the main programs and services that are offered through Home Base. Yeah, so our largest program is a two-week intensive clinical program, and that takes place in Boston at our National Center of Excellence. Uh, essentially, we've built a program to compress more than two years of clinical care for PTSD, for traumatic brain injury, um, that serves our ser active duty service members as well as um, veterans, no matter how long they served uh, or what era of service. So we will fly someone up to Boston and get them uh, you know, a really intense dose of therapy to help them you know, move past setbacks that they've been dealing with since um, trauma uh, from military service. So that's our largest program. We, we do a lot of things, like you mentioned in the, in the intro, um, wellness programs, free recreational programs. We have uh, resiliency and stress reduction programs we teach online uh, to veterans and family members. And um, we're excited to bring some of our Florida programs up to the panhandle. Yeah, it's very needed here. So what is Homebase doing throughout Florida and here locally? Yeah, so home base has really been focused on uh, reaching the veterans and their family members here in Florida, right? We know Florida has a huge veteran population, uh, but the way we did that was we didn't really want to replicate everything that was going on up in Boston. We wanted to focus on what we call the community empowerment model. And that meant, you know, the communities down here are already, already very patriotic. They, they deliver great care, um, but they didn't really understand what veteran-centered care was. So that's where home base came in to partner with great organizations who are already looking to treat veterans and help them deliver veteran-centered care that is culturally competent, that is trauma-informed, that is uh, low uh, wait times to get in, and of course, it's provided at absolutely no cost to them or their family members. And it must have the wraparound services that go along with it, right? If you just treat PTSD, you're gonna miss a lot of the other things that are really um, crucial for the veteran and their family member. So it's also providing those wraparound services. So that's been our goal for the past 10 years is to partner with amazing organizations in Florida and help them deliver what we call veteran-centered care. That's awesome. And those, that holistic look at the whole care cycle is, is so important. So how is Homebase able to offer these services for free? And what impact does that accessibility have on those that are served by it? It's a great question. Um, so we've been very fortunate uh, to be uh, supported by a grateful nation of donors and supporters philanthropically to support our programs. Uh, we've also been very fortunate to get some funding from the state of Florida after uh, a number of years of operating here um, and treating veterans. Uh, we went to the state and they were very gracious about helping us expand our operations and grow it and, and kind of take the model that we had built and scale it. Um, and the benefits of that, uh, kind of that private philanthropy and local uh, state funding model is it, is it really doesn't provide any restrictions on who we can give the care to. So as you mentioned, 
home base is veteran and family care. And too often, veteran-based programming and veteran care is too siloed on the veteran themselves. But we know that PTSD really permeates into the family, right? To the spouses, to the children, to the parents. And so for home base, it's important that we treat both the veteran and the family member. And so uh, the funding model that we have allows us to do that. So if you're a spouse, if you're a parent, if you're a sibling and you're feeling the effects of your veterans, uh, you know, kind of post-war trauma, home base is there for you as well, because uh, we know that it doesn't just stop at the veteran. Absolutely. Well, say someone is experiencing symptoms of PTSD, mental health struggles, um, how do they start the process of receiving services? Yeah, I think the easiest way would just be to log on to our website, that's homebase.org. Um, you can find out, you know, a wealth of information about all of our programs. And I, I believe on every page, there's a big red button that'll say connect to care mm -hmm. and just click on that connect to care link. You can, um, someone can call in and leave a message and get a return call or just send a, you know, a email uh, directly to our clinic and one of our outreach coordinators will, will follow up with you. Perfect. So very easy to kind of get in there and access it. Absolutely. Well, how can people get involved or learn more about Homebase? Yeah, I think um, the website's probably the best source of information. Um, like I said, there's phone numbers on there to, to call and have any questions answered. Um, I'm here locally and, and really excited to um, help spread the word so we can always, um, you know, appreciate supporters and, and word, you know, uh, word of mouth really is the best way to spread this. I, I would just add to that and say, you know, helping us spread the word, letting your veteran know, uh, you know, there's a huge veteran uh, population here in Florida, chances are you work with the veteran, you go to church with the veteran. So just spread the word, help help them let them know that their services that they have access to today through home base. Um, and of course, we're always looking for, um, you know, great community partners and supporters who can help us, uh, you know, deliver the, the care that we're working on as well. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much for being here and letting us know about these important services. Yeah, thank thanks you. for having us. Next up, we're discussing elder abuse how to recognize it and stop it. Stay with us. It's important to get a flu shot each and every year because flu viruses are constantly changing and immunity from the vaccine decreases over time. Flu vaccines are updated annually to work against that year's viruses. The best time to get your shot is in the fall, but getting it later can still help. Getting a flu shot lowers your risk of getting sick. And if you do happen to get flu, it's likely to be less severe. Animal Allies is looking for volunteers and there are many ways that you can help. From taking care of cats to using your computer and social media skills, any and all assistance is greatly appreciated. We have morning and afternoon shifts every day or help at adoption events. You could even foster a kitty at home and it counts towards community service hours for bright futures. Find Animal Allies Florida on Facebook and Instagram or go to aaflorida.org slash volunteer. When cancer tries to take you away from the things that matter most, Baptist Cancer Institute offers caring physicians and the most innovative treatment options. With convenient locations and a wide array of support programs and services, we're here to help you during the most difficult of times. As a member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network, we're bringing even more innovative cancer care to our community right here at home. When you need cancer care, we'll be there. June is Elder Abuse Awareness Month, and while this is a challenging topic, everyone in the community should know the signs of abuse and the resources available for victims. Sadly, research indicates that one in 10 older people living independently in the community are affected by abuse in the United States. To learn more, we're talking to some local experts on this topic. We've got Elder Abuse Prevention Coordinator Cassandra McAway and Program Specialist Kathy Irons, both from the Northwest Florida Area Agency on Aging. Thank you both for being Thank here. Thank you so much for having us. So first of all, I know elder abuse doesn't always look like what we think of as abuse. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the forms that elder abuse can take? Great question, Emily. So in addition to the abuse we think of initially as physical abuse, abuse also encompasses any form of neglect, financial manipulation, or exploitation of any kind. Those all fall under that category of abuse. 
So what should someone do if they are the victim of any of these kinds of abuse or if they suspect it's taking place with someone else? Great question. Um, call the 1-800-96-ABUSE. And you don't have to prove it, but just report it. So any suspicions? Any suspicions yes, at all? Any suspicions at all. And what about people that are, they feel like wary of, of getting an agency involved, that they're not quite sure? What would you say to somebody who, who maybe has some suspicions, isn't quite sure, but is kind of scared to make a phone call and, and try to report something? I think that fear cripples a lot of us, and it's important to remember you're your own best advocate. And agencies like ours and programs exist because people want to help other vulnerable people. And so it is, while it's scary to say, I need help or I might need help, it's even scarier to have not sought out that help and have some, some very unfortunate long-term consequences. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me about World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. We are so excited about World Elder Abuse Illness mm -hmm. Day. The purpose of it is to uh, bring focus on the opportunity for the our city and our nation to know that World Elder Abuse does exist. And this year's event is gonna be held down at, uh, and that's June the 18th at Bayview Senior Citizen Center. And we are beginning at one o'clock. We're so excited about it because we have education information and we have, this is gonna be an expo for the community so that they will be um, able to relate to service organizations such as ours. And we're gonna have dual prizes as well. Oh, wonderful, and of mm -hmm. course, Council on Aging will, will be there as part of the day. Of course. <laughs> So what is something that people may not know about elder abuse? It can happen to anyone. When we think of internet and email scams, it seems like everyone's been a victim of that. You know, there's, there's no discrimination. It can happen to anyone. And exploiters are very manipulative and smart. Mm -hmm. and, and so again, put that pride aside. And becoming vulnerable and saying I'm uncomfortable or something may not be right is, is a sign of courage and reach out to someone, whether it's 1-800-96-ABUSE, the Elder Helpline, Council on Aging, or in case of, of someone being in harm's way, of course, call 911. Absolutely. And you're right. I think that there is a lot of shame associated with, especially if you've been scammed out of money or right. you feel like you fell for something. Absolutely. But it is it is an act of courage and the first step to getting yes. help to, mm -hmm. to go talk to someone about it. What should someone do if they are being abused? Um, but the abuser is maybe their, their resource, their support system for medical care, shelter, food, et cetera. Without hesitation, call 911. Our first responders are highly trained to provide safe and immediate intervention, and then they can refer the victim to other longer term solutions. But if you ever feel unsafe, that's what 911 is for. And actually, safety is our first priority mm -hmm. because we want them out of harm's way. Whatever the situation is, we want them to be able to be comfortable enough to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And what else is it that people should know about elder abuse and the resources that are out there to prevent and stop it from happening? Well, here in the state of Florida, we are so fortunate to have uh, the abuse because we work up under the Department of Elder Affairs. And uh, like I said, you don't have to prove it, but report it. And reporting it, sometimes just asking questions to our elders, such as, are you in harm's way? Like one, is anyone doing anything to you to uh, harm you in any way? Questions like that, because they will talk back to you. And I wanted to also to let you know that um, we're so mindful of the fact that our elders took care of us. My mom took care of me. Your mom took care of you. And now they are put into this position. It makes them feel very uncomfortable. But talk to them, and they will talk to you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sometimes okay. people they're the nurturer they're, and they don't want to receive that don't. nurturing mm -hmm. or that, that assistance. No. Tell me a little bit, we were talking about the different types of, of abuse and the forms it can take. Tell me about 
self-neglect. This is something that people will reach out to us about often where there's an older adult who basically isn't taking care of themselves. And when does that rise to the level of abuse? People don't want to use that word when it's self-inflicted, but, but please tell me about it's that. It's really, really the worst. And actually, uh, statistics tell us that females self-neglect themselves more than male. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes male will talk to another male, but for female, we'll kind of keep it hush-hush and won't say anything to anybody about it. We neglect our bodies, we neglect our health, uh, getting medical attention, all of this come into play. And this could be very harmful. And perhaps whenever the agency gets to the person, it's probably almost too late. And we don't want to get ever get to that state, ever get to that state. And it makes them feel, I just don't want to talk about it. And most of the time they're living alone. They um, don't have a support system. And we do everything we can. The helpline is there for you at the agency, and we can find resources to help them as well. Absolutely. So okay. even in that case, it's that same 1-800-96-ABUSE. Yes. yes. Well, thank you for sharing this important information, and we're looking forward to participating in World Elder Abuse Awareness Day on June 18th at Bayview Senior Center. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Matt. And thank you for watching. Until next time, enjoy life. You've earned it. As we age, staying active in life and involved in the community can become a challenge. But with Council on Aging of West Florida's wide range of home-based services, you remain healthy, independent, and engaged. From Meals on Wheels and respite care to senior dining sites and the retreat, you'll find the support and connection that you need to age well. Aging looks different for everyone, and we're here to help you meet your needs and thrive while maintaining what makes you, you. We've been in the community since 1972, advocating for elders and supporting those who care for our parents and grandparents. Now, join us as we discuss the age-related issues that matter to you.